This is a presentation about fire safety in tunnels. The question is, are suppression systems the answer? Uh, my name is Dr. Ricky Carville. I am Assistant Director of the BRE Centre for Fire Safety Engineering at the University of Edinburgh. Some observations from a different test. This one was carried out in Hagerbach uh, in Switzerland in 2005 uh, and involved an arrangement of uh, cars. Uh, the three cars indicated in orange in that diagram there uh, were the ones initially set on fire uh, and the other blue and uh, rather green and pink cars around them were uh, to see if the fire would spread uh, to those vehicles or not. The water mist system was activated very early in the test um, but the heat release rate, and what we're showing here is a graph of heat release rate, the heat release rate of the, the fire did grow slowly even when the water mist system was active. And after a certain period of time, the water system was switched off and the heat release rate grew very rapidly uh, in the few minutes the uh, system was switched off and continued to grow uh, even after the system was switched back on again. Uh, during this period, the second period of uh, operation, the, the water mist uh, also did not prevent fire spread uh, to two of the adjacent cars. And so here we see uh, a situation where a fire grows when the mist is active uh, and a fire spreads where the mist is active. Here's some other tests uh, carried out in the San Pedro de Anis, uh, tunnel in Spain in 2006. Uh, these are tests involving a low pressure water mist system. Uh, the reference test, uh, the fuel load burned like that. Again, we're looking at a graph of heat release rate. I'll put some numbers on in a moment. Um, the mist was activated uh, after a few minutes of, of ignition um, and what we see with one fuel load, uh, a heavy goods vehicle load without a cover, um, was that certainly the activation of the mist did interrupt the burning in some way uh, but the fire still grew to by more than 100% from when the mist was activated. Uh, it grew to a peak of about 30 megawatts uh, and the heat release rate was re maintained between 30, uh, 20 and 30 megawatts uh, for about half an hour. Put a tarpaulin on it, otherwise the, the, flo the load is the same and the heat release rate goes all the way up to 55 megawatts. Much larger fire um, and a a fire of that size for that duration uh, would probably uh, pose some problems for the structural integrity of a tunnel. Uh, some more tests carried out uh, in the same tunnel by a, a different water mist company, this time using a high pressure water mist system. Uh, here we see mist activation when the fire load has grown to about 20 megawatts in severity uh, using this, what they call the standard severity HGV load. Uh, and in this instance the water mist was not able to uh, extinguish the fire uh, but it did maintain the fire at no larger than 20 megawatts for about half an hour. But using a, a higher severity fuel load, uh, even though the water mist was activated much earlier, uh, the peak heat release rate is considerably higher um, and that graph actually causes me to wonder whether the mist actually had any significant influence uh, on the burning behaviour of that fuel at all. So some conclusions. Uh, remember the fire safety management uh, things we started off with? Safe and smoke free egress, does suppression give this? Well there may be a problem because visibility in the suppression may be actually worse than in smoke. So that is not assured, that's not uh, provided by a suppression system. Also when it comes to smoke extraction uh, the smoke suppression mixture is much harder to extract than smoke alone. But the visibility away from the suppression zone may be okay. And perhaps that's where most of the people are evacuated. Does suppression give you a clear route to the fire location for the fire brigade? Well perhaps, but again visibility may be a problem. Does it keep the fire as small as possible? Well, in certain circumstances yes. Depending on the fuel load, the fire may be contained, the fire spread may be prevented, uh, fire growth may be slowed, even fire size may be reduced. But all that varies depending on what the fire load is. Um, for some fuels, fire spread will happen. For some fuels, 
fire growth may not be slowed. For some fuels, fire size may not be reduced. But yet, in all instances, some protection of facil facilities uh, was observed. So what about using ventilation and suppression together? Uh, a recent publication by the World Road Association, PIARC, uh, in their publication from 2008 called Road Tunnels and Assessment of Fixed Firefighting Systems, uh, they say this, and I quote, In most cases, fixed firefighting systems are not capable of extinguishing vehicle fires. The aims are to slow down fire development, reduce or completely prevent fire from spreading to other vehicles, provide for safe evacuation, maintain tenability for firefighting operations, protect the tunnel structure and limit environmental pollution. To fulfil these purposes, the fixed firefighting system must, amongst other things, be designed to handle air velocities in the range of 10 metres a second that can result from ventilation system operation or natural effects. No water mist system, and I suspect no deluge system, has ever been tested under these conditions. We simply do not know if it will work. The mist will probably be blown away. We carried out some modelling of uh, droplets uh, subject to, to airflow at the University of Edinburgh. And considering a 50 metre zone uh, of the tunnel, uh, the, the various coloured graphs represent the trajectories of various different droplet sizes um, ranging from 300 microns, which is the, the largest drop size at uh, the orange line, uh, through to the red line at 35 micron. And even for um, 300 micron droplets, which are small deluge droplets or very, very large water mist droplets, uh, they are carried uh, a long way, uh, almost 50 metres along the tunnel before they reach the road deck by a 10 metre a second flow. The vast majority of water mist droplets which fall in the range between 35 micron and 170 micron will be blown completely out of the 50 meter zone. Even at a 3 meter a second flow, um, all the droplets from 120 micron and less are blown completely out of a 50 meter zone um, by a 3 meter a second flow. This has to make you question the use of ventilation with suppression systems, especially water mist systems. Uh, and those drop, those uh, results uh, were published at the Third International Symposium on Tunnel Safety and Security in Stockholm 2008 uh, and can be downloaded from my website www.tunnelfiresafety.co.uk So actually we don't need to think about can suppression systems work at very, very high ventilation conditions? What we need to identify are what are the optimum ventilation conditions for effective fire suppression. Uh, and I believe that some testing is intended by the water mist company FogTech to look at that very issue. We also need to consider or reconsider critical ventilation velocity uh, for smoke control because if suppression is used, the critical ventilation velocity in a misty environment will be much different and I suspect a lot less than in a dry environment. Lower ventilation flows required for smoke control, um, and perhaps that can have a knock on effect uh, in reducing costs, uh, re reducing ventilation system costs. More information uh, on this uh, and uh, my other research can be found on my website www.tunnelfiresafety.co.uk. Uh, and thank you for your attention, thank you for watching.